Hey y'all, Noons here. Welcome back to Noons Airborne RC. If it's your first time here, smash that like and subscribe button so you can get notified for future content. And if you're a longtime viewer and subscriber, welcome back. Well y'all, today we're going to be talking about wing bags. I've been getting a few big jets, nice, and I want to keep them nice. And I got to start stacking them in the garage because I need room in the house. So I uh, went ahead and made some wing bags. Now there's many, many ways you could do this. This is probably not going to be the right one for you, but this is the way that I went ahead and did it because I want it to look all fancy, schmancy, and schnazzy, and I want it to last a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and get to it, but first, let's roll that intro. Get some! And we're back, everybody. So wing bags, um, what I went ahead and I chose to go ahead and do is most, uh, if you buy a kit from like Carf or any of those high-end dealers, they usually send you wing bags with the model. And it's nothing but that uh, reflective bubble wrap stuff that you can get at Home Depot and that's where I got it. Uh, like I said in the introduction, there are many ways you can do it. You can trace the shape of your wing and you can go ahead and line it around with duct tape. That'll go ahead and work. But out here in the hot Arizona sun, that would work up until maybe about 7.30 in the morning and that the, uh, duct tape will go ahead and start peeling back. So what I went ahead and I chose to do is I went ahead and chose to sew them and I modeled it basically uh, from the ones that I would get with the Rebel Hot and stuff. So some things that we're going to go ahead and need is you're going to need a tape measure to go ahead and measure stuff out. You're going to need a sharp knife. I choose to use an X-Acto. You're going to need a straight edge for your straight cuts, you're gonna need that ins uh, insulated bubble wrap. I, I got mine from Home Depot. This is a four foot wide roll. Uh, you don't need to get it that wide. Two feet or maybe even the 18 inch roll will suffice. Um, I had this left over for making some reflectors for my travel trailer. So this is what I'm gonna go ahead and use. Um, another thing you'll need if you're gonna go ahead and do it uh, the way I'm about to show you, is you will need a pinwheel and this is to go ahead and pop all the bubbles so we can do the sewing on the sewing machine and you're all going to need some double folded bias tape this is half inch this is to go around the sides to make it all nice and pretty if um i got it on sale at uh amazon i didn't know really what to look for my wife's the seamstress in the family um i probably would have went with three quarters inch to give me a little more leeway but that's pretty much what the edge will look like when we're all said and done. Nice and pretty, right? So this wing right here, it's for the Jet Mach 60. I already got one side done. So we're going to go ahead and start on the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and take you along. So let's go learn something. So the first thing is we're going to need to go ahead and cut our pieces. Now that roll was 48 feet. And I know on my Jet Mach, it's a wide cord. So what I went ahead and I did is I cut the length that I needed, which was 41 inches for half of the wing for this plane. And then I split that in two. So then you want to go ahead and use your wing as a diagram. And we want to go ahead and trace out the shape. Now when you're tracing out the shape, you don't want to trace right up to the edge. You have to give it enough slack for the thickness of the wing plus anything sticking out like stuff like this. You don't wanna make a wing bag then all of a sudden it'd be unusable. So what I usually do is I take the wing and I go out about two, two and a half inches and I trace right along there. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, we're back. And as you can see, I have my straight edge that I will be cutting along for the shape of the wing. And that's what I'll be using, that straight edge and that exacto. So what I like to do is I like to measure it one time. I'll cut this one, and then I'll use this to make the other half so both of them sister together perfect. So let's get this one cut out and make the other side.
So now that we got our two halves, uh, for reference, I do shiny side in. Last thing I need is for the glare to be very pronounced uh, at the airfield or blind me. So what I like to do is I use uh, normal packy tape and I just put a little tape just to hold this straight so I can go ahead and do my first sewing. Uh, and before I do that, do my puncturing. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab this tape and we're gonna tape up the edges. All right, now that we got everything cinched down, it's too thick on the sides and everything to go ahead and do any sewing or augmenting. So that's where the pinwheel comes in. So I use a piece of cardboard and I lay it underneath and I come in, I honestly, I'm pretty generous. There's five wheels, I come up to about the fourth wheel and all we're doing is we're gonna roll this over and pop these bubbles. Gonna go ahead and go on down. It doesn't have to be all pretty, guys. On this part, the sewing will hide a lot. But we want to make sure that we get these bubbles popped to get a nice flat area because this also gives us a tensile strength when we sew. And that's what we're doing right there. We're just basically popping everything so we can get that so we can sew it straight across. So we're gonna do this on the bottom edge and the two side edges and leave the pocket open. So Let's get her going. Okay, everybody, all said and done, we have our two halves put together. We have them taped just to hold them while we feed them to the sewing machine. And we also went ahead and used our pinwheel to pop all the bubbles. So what that bubble popping does is it gives us a nice flat edge that we can feed in through the sewing machine. If we couldn't, it would just be too high. So now we're going to go ahead and go inside and borrow my wife's toy. And uh, hopefully she doesn't yell at us. So let's pick up over there. All right, everybody, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the sewing stuff. My wife got her thing all set up for me because I don't know how to use it other than just feed it through. Um, it's a Singer M1500. Uh, you don't need anything heavy duty or special to go ahead and puncture this through. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and throw a sewing edge all the way around. That way it makes it easier for us to put our bifold tape. Um, I'm by no uh, means an experienced seamstress so I know there's people that can do this all at the same shop, but not me. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now for the last step, we're gonna go ahead and use this bias tape. And basically all it is, it's fabric that's been folded and steamed right there. And this goes ahead and it overlaps and we're gonna go ahead and sew it in to give it that little professional touch. So let's get that done.
All right, y'all, we're back. Here you go. Uh, I chose to go ahead and do it in two parts. Uh, the overall wingspan on the Jet Mach 60 is 80 inches, and I like to keep my wings tight so I don't take it apart. I keep them in full length, even though uh, it was built in two pieces. So go ahead and made it in two parts, sandwich them together, and that's pretty much it. Ease of transport, wing is nice and protected. And when I get to the field, it's just basically just grab them and slide them off and we're ready to go. Well, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Like I said, there's more ways than one. You could literally just go ahead and make these two halves and use duct tape around it. I didn't want to use it because in this hot Arizona sun, it would become less tacky and I was worried that my wing would go ahead and stick in the most opportune spot. So um, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something and there's more videos to come. Noon's out. Get some.